Welcome to the Peony Patterns YouTube channel. My name is Ashley and I am the Sew Along host here for Peony Patterns. So today we are going to be sewing the new Appleberry Tea that is a wardrobe staple and features gorgeous puff short sleeves. It can easily be worn with shorts, pants or skirts and is also perfect for layering as well. It is also the perfect tea to match our brand new Appleberry skirt. If you haven't yet got your copy of the Appleberry tea, I will pop a link to that in the description box of this video. It is actually a free pattern, so you can simply download that for free and then begin sewing. So we are going to jump straight in and see all of the pattern pieces that I have cut and prepared ready for my Appleberry tea. Then we will begin sewing. So here are all of my pattern pieces cut and prepared ready for my Appleberry tea. So firstly I have one front piece and one back piece cut. Those pattern pieces are both cut on the fold. I then have two sleeve pieces. They are also cut on the fold as well. Then I have my two short sleeve cuff pieces which are cut on the fold as well as one neck band piece which is also cut on the fold. Alternatively, both of these pieces can be cut instead using the cutting chart on page 13 of the Appleberry Tea Pattern. So that is everything that you will need cut and prepared ready to then begin sewing. So to begin the construction of the Appleberry tea, I have my front and back tea pieces here. We are going to be placing those right sides together, aligning the shoulders and also the side raw edges and pinning. Once you have finished pinning your front and back T pieces together at the shoulders and also those side raw edges, we are now going to head to the sewing machine using a stretch stitch and a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance to sew where we have pinned. We will then also be finishing off those raw edges using an overlocker or a zigzag stitch. Now is also an ideal time to add in any size and care labels into your side seams as well. Once you have then finished sewing all four of those edges and then have also finished those raw edges using an overlocker or a zigzag stitch, we are then going to press all of those seams towards the back of the tee. Now ensuring that the tee is turned right sides out, we are going to use an overlocker or a zigzag stitch to finish the hem of the tee, making sure to not trim off any of the raw edge whilst doing so. You also want to make sure that when you are doing this step that the side seams remain pressed towards the back of the tee. Once you have then finished that raw bottom edge off using an overlocker or a zigzag stitch, you can then just give it a quick press to remove any waviness that may have resulted due to the stretchy nature of the fabric. Once pressed, the next step is optional but is definitely recommended to make the hemming process much easier. So because the hem of the tee does have a slight curve, to assist in the hemming of the tee, we can actually sew a long basting stitch along the entire hem. That will be 5 8 of an inch from this now bottom finished edge. When doing this stitch, you can simply use just a regular long basting stitch. So I will go ahead and do mine now and we'll come back to show you what that will look like if you do decide to go ahead with this step. So if you have decided to go ahead with that step of sewing some basting stitches along the bottom edge of your tee, that will be 5 8 of an inch away from that now bottom finished edge. This is now what it will look like. Then we can use those stitches as a guide when now pressing up our hem. So now by turning the tee wrong sides out, we are now going to press the finished hem up in place towards the wrong side of the fabric by 5 8 of an inch. Or alternatively, you can simply use that line of basting stitches if you did those as a guide when pressing up. Once you have then finished pressing your hem up in place, you can pop a few pins in that if you like, just to secure that prior to stitching. Then we are going to sew our hem in place using a stretch stitch 
a twin needle or a cover stitch machine. Once you have then sewn your hem in place, this is now what your tee will look like so far. So I have personally used a twin needle to stitch mine in place. You can also now go ahead and remove your basting stitches. Then we are going to pop this aside and begin working on our neckbands. So to now begin the construction of our neckband, I have my neckband piece here. We are going to fold that in half widthwise with the right sides of fabric together, aligning the two short ends and pinning. Then we are going to head to the sewing machine using a stretch stitch and a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance to sew that in place where we have pinned. So once you have now sewn your neckband in half right sides together, we are then going to press that seam flat. Then fold our neckband in half wrong sides together. Once you have then folded your neckband in half, we can then align the seam on both sides and pin. Then we are going to quarter the neckband by marking the quarter points with either a removable sewing marker or pins. So the seam in our neckband is going to become the centre back of the neckband and is going to be our first point. So then by folding the neckband at that seam, folding that in half, and on the opposite side of that is now our second point to mark. Then by now aligning those two points in the centre there, we can now find our third and fourth points. So once we have done that, we have now essentially split our neckband up into four equal points. So in quarters, now we are going to repeat that and quarter the neckline of the T as well. So by firstly aligning those shoulder seams together, we can then find the centre back and centre front of our T. And once you find both of those points, you can either use a pin or an air erasable marker to mark both of those. Then by matching these two points together, we can then find the other two quarter points. So these next points will fall just before the shoulder seam. So by matching those up, we can now find our third point and our fourth. So now we have also split our neckline up into four equal sections as well. Then with right sides together, we're going to slide our neckband over the neckline of our T, aligning the raw edges of the neckband with the raw edges of the neckline. And first, I'm going to start by aligning the seam of the neckband with the centre back of my T and pinning. Then the opposite side of my neckband will be pinned to the centre front. Then pin those last two quarter points together. Now the neckband will need to be gently stretched to meet each point. Now you can continue pinning your neckband to your neckline like this. So by stretching and pinning, if you feel you need to, like so. So I've just pinned one half of the neckband in place. And when stitching, we will need to gently still stretch that neckband out to ensure that our neckline isn't puckered underneath. Now we are going to head to the sewing machine to attach our neckband to our neckline using a stretch stitch and a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. We will then also be finishing off that raw edge using an overlocker or a zigzag stitch. As I mentioned, it is really important to gently stretch the neckband as sewing. Once you have then attached your neckband to your neckline of your T, we are now going to press that seam allowance down towards the T. Once pressed, we are then going to use either a long straight stitch, a twin needle, or a cover stitch machine to now stitch that seam allowance in place towards the T. 
So once you have then finished top stitching around your neckline, which then holds that seam down in place, you can then give your neckline a press and then we are going to pop this aside, ready to begin the construction of our sleeves. So I have both of my sleeves here and we are going to start by folding one of those wrong sides together and aligning the two short raw side edges and pinning. Then repeating that for our second sleeve as well. Now we are going to head to the sewing machine using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and a stretch stitch to now sew where we have pinned on both sleeves. Once sewn, we will then also be finishing off those raw edges using either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch. Once you have then sewn your sleeves together and finished off those raw edges using either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch, we can now pop those aside to now begin working on our sleeve cuffs. So we are going to fold those in half widthwise right sides together, aligning the short raw edges and pinning. Now using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and a stretch stitch, we are going to be sewing both of these in place where we have pinned. Once sewn, we are now going to press those seams open. Then we are going to fold our cuff in half, wrong sides together, just like we did with our neckband. You can press it at this stage if you like, just to help hold that in place. Now bringing back our sleeves and turning both of those right sides out, we are going to head to the sewing machine to sew two rows of gathering stitches along the bottom raw edge of both sleeves. The first row of gathering stitches will be a quarter of an inch away from the bottom raw edge, and the second row will be half an inch from the first line of gathering stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and do both of mine now and we'll come back ready to then gather our sleeves and attach our cuffs. So once you have then sewn your two rows of gathering stitches in both sleeves, we are then going to gather the bottom raw edge of the sleeve to the width of our cuff. So once you have then finished gathering both sleeves to be the same width as the cuffs, we are then going to take our cuffs right sides together and slide the cuff over the end of the sleeve, aligning the raw edges of our cuff to the raw edges of our sleeve. You'll also be matching the seam of the cuff to the seam in the sleeve and pinning. Then we are going to distribute those gathers evenly and continue pinning in place. So once you have then pinned your cuffs to the bottom of your sleeves, we are now going to head to the sewing machine using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance to now sew our cuff to our sleeve. We will then be removing any gathering stitches and then finishing off these raw edges using an overlocker or a zigzag stitch. So once you have then attached your cuffs to your sleeves and have also finished those raw edges off, we are then going to fold the cuff down and press that seam allowance up towards our sleeve. Then repeat that for our second sleeve. Once we've pressed those seam allowances in place, we are then going to head to our sewing machine again to do two rows of gathering stitches along now the top curved edge of our sleeve between the notches that we would have marked when we were cutting our pattern pieces. So I have gone ahead and remarked mine in so that they are visible now on camera. So I will be doing two rows of gathering stitches between these notches. The first row will be a quarter of an inch from this top raw edge. And then the second row will be half an inch from the first line of gathering stitches. And I will be doing that for both sleeves. Once you have then sewn your two rows of gathering stitches in both sleeves, we can then gather our sleeve cap. 
making sure to leave the tails of thread long so that the sleeve can be adjusted shortly when set into the bodice. Then we're going to repeat that for our second sleeve. So to now attach our sleeves, I have turned my T inside out. Then taking one of our sleeves, we are going to be placing that inside of one of the arm openings, right sides together. So the sleeve is out the right way still. We are then going to start by aligning the sleeve seam to the side seam of our T and pinning. Then match the top center of the sleeve to the shoulder seam and pin. Once you have both of those points now pinned, we are then going to come back down to the bottom of the sleeve at the underarm and begin pinning from there, moving up towards the shoulder. Once you have pinned all the way up to then where your gathering stitches begin on either side, we are then going to adjust those gathers to fit in the arm's eye and continue pinning. So once you then have one sleeve pinned in place, we are then going to repeat those exact same steps for our second sleeve. Now, when you have both sleeves then pinned in place, we are going to head to the sewing machine to stitch those in place using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and a stretch stitch. Once sewn, we can then finish those raw edges using an overlocker or a zigzag stitch. So once you have then sewn your sleeves to your tee, have finished those raw edges using an overlocker or a zigzag stitch and have also removed any gathering threads, we can then give our tee one last press. Then once pressed, you will now be looking at your completed Appleberry tee. Congratulations on now completing your Appleberry tee. I hope that you have enjoyed today's video and sewing along with me. Make sure to join our Facebook sew along group if you would like to join in sew alongs in real time where we do actually split the construction up over a matter of days to sew alongside each other. And there are also amazing prizes to be won just by simply participating. I will also link our main Peony Patterns group in the description box of the video as well, if you would like to go ahead and join that, where you can then share photos of your makes using patterns by Peony Patterns. If you have enjoyed today's video, make sure to give us a like and also subscribe to our channel for future sew along videos. Thank you all so much for joining in and sewing along with me today. I hope to see you all again very soon for another sew along.